Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Greetings and welcome to episode 271 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is still Barbara. Well, still Barbara, how are you doing? (laughs) I'm fantastic, thank you. Yeah, yep. we have hit the hot and muggy Indiana weather. Doesn't that only last for like a day? God, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know you had hot, muggy weather. What does that mean? 60 degrees? Uh, No, I think it's 94. Wow. And it's thick. And there's like air quality reports. That's hotter than it is here, my friend. Well, there you go. Good for you. You know what? Sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Well, I only get like, what, one week that I get to say that, and then it'll be beautiful down there. We'll have a foot of snow. That's so. awesome, though. Have fun in it. Yeah. What about running? Do you run in it? You know, I try to do it early, and if I don't get out by 10, I'm done. Ugh. I can't I can't do it. Yeah. It's just so Muggy. miserable. Yeah, yeah, it's like hard to yeah, breathe. Yeah, you want to enjoy your runs, because we're runners, so we actually like running. And if yeah. I, I'm miserable, I don't even want to do it. So, yeah, I yeah. agree. 10 a.m. is my cutoff, and, you know, there's many times where I don't get going by 10 so yeah so what's up i had this really interesting chair side experience this week you know i'm with derby dental and i basically my whole role is just helping offices in indiana so i'm in this dental office in the middle of nowhere indiana i mean like nowhere like <laughs> like i can't even use my apple maps feature because i don't have connection so they called me and asked if I could help them do a chairside pickup on some locators for an existing denture. I'm like, sweet, I've done quite a few of them, happy to help. So I made the appointment and we scheduled it. Now, before the appointment came up, I actually found out that we're going to use Novalox. Are these foreign words to you? Yeah. Okay, are. so Novalock is like Strawman's version of locator. Okay. I mean, it's no big deal. The chair side pickup technique is still the same. So I got there, and there's this tiny, tiny, sweet old lady that had, like, I think the thinnest denture I've ever seen. So I, I'm building this up because instead of just doing a usual chair side locator pickup, this thing took, hmm, I'm not going to say three hours, but close. Damn. It took a while. I was so afraid I was going to be popping teeth out. But it was a few back and forth trying to get it to work. But eventually, Dr. Strope, who's the doctor I was working with, we eventually got it picked up on the two lower Novalox. We got the patient done. We got the patient out the door, cleaning up. I'm leaving. The doctor and I were kind of talking about how long it took and what we can do maybe different next time. Yeah. And she says, well, you can always talk about how this is the longest Novalox pickup on your podcast what i'm like i was like wait wait, 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 what in the middle of nowhere in the middle of nowhere and i'm like i'm like you know about my podcast (laughs) she's like yeah i listen to a lot of podcasts i've listened to yours i'm like oh my god how cool so now i'm like slightly embarrassed i'm thinking to myself oh god what memes has she seen (laughs) what (laughs) what have i said but (laughs) it's just threw me off and I don't get to see that, you know. Doctors don't tell me that. Uh-huh. So that was fun. Well, congrats. You know, and, and big shout out to Dr. Strope and all the doctors out there that listen to the podcast. We appreciate you. Well, guess what, guys? This is the last week to get your Voices from the Bench shirt, letting the world know that dental technicians have better technique. I think that's kind of hot, personally, because we do in more than one way. Just saying. At least I can say that for myself. So head over to VoicesFromTheBench.com and look for the We Have Better Technique shirts link to get yourself a shirt. I was going to say get your shirt a shirt. To get yourself a shirt, tank top, hoodie, or a long sleeve. I thought we had those little half tank tops, but I think that was just a meme. Is that right? No, we have tank tops. They're They're like half tank tops where you see your whole belly button. Oh, God, I hope not. (laughs) I think it was Blake Barksdale that put that on the Oh, Remember that? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So remember, you guys, you have to order before June 10th, and all of the profits are donated to the Foundation for Dental Laboratory Technology. I think you're racing and I'm racing. So yeah. I think we got to do a combo. So thank you, everybody. Get your shirts. And for those that know Blake Barksdale, he's the reason we don't do <laughs> mid cut off shirts. Bingo. Because he would buy one, and it's all something we don't want to see. Oh, yeah. I agree. So it's June, and you know what that means, right? Um, <gasps> CDT and Dental Technician Appreciation Month? Damn tootin'. All right. Damn tootin'. Wow, that's got to be a new jo- uh, Joe, if you're listening, damn tootin' <laughs> is your next one to go here. That means in every episode in June, that is if we get some every week, <laughs> we're going to play Audio Thanks. So as of this recording, which we're doing on Friday, we only have a few. And if we get more before the episode releases, we're going to put them at the end. But it's super easy to do. Just record yourself on your phone or your computer and you're saying something like this. Hi, I'm Elvis from Derby Dental Laboratories. (laughs) And I want to thank everyone at Derby who has taken the time to show me so many amazing new skills that I am using chairside almost every day. Do you see how easy that was? That was pretty damn easy. And it made everybody at Derby have like the feel goods. Yep. And that's what we want to do. All right. So come on, guys. So just record yourself. Super easy. Email it to us at info at voicesfromthebench.com, and we're going to play it on the podcast. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the episode to hear all of the great thanks that we got this week. Right. But this week, we got to talk to an orthotech. And let me tell you, he uses that term very loosely. Who is the most specific technician that I think we've ever talked to. Jay Work the third was at a friend's house and needed to use the restroom. <laughs> Opening the wrong door <laughs> opened another door of opportunity to a now very successful career. It's a great story how he finds out about this. It is actually. But Jay comes on to talk about learning what a crozet is. And then he tells Barb and I what it is in very simple terms because <laughs> we don't get it. He also talks about how he is only one of four in the U.S. that makes these things. What's it like going out on his own? And how a technician can be successful only making one type of appliance. Appliance. Why can't I say that? Appliance. Appliance. One type of appliance. That's close enough. It's super interesting, the history of the Crozet and the rarity of the people that can make them. So join us as we chat with Jay Work the Third. Did you know that not all zirconia is the same? Zircad Prime Zirconia from Ivoclar is uniquely produced with gradient technology which allows two powders that normally center at different intervals to be combined into one material which centers uniformly. The manufacturing process not only optimizes the translucent properties, but it also creates a seamless progression of shade while maintaining optimal strength. Zircad Prime is now more affordable than ever and will give you the results your dentist will notice. I've seen it. It's true. Contact your local Ivoclar sales representative today to find out more about Prime and how Ivoclar can support your success. And as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Ivoclar. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. We are super excited today to welcome to the podcast, let's see, Jay Works the Third. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. A name so simple that even Elvis can pronounce it. Oh, yes. That's <laughs> so true. I was actually thinking that. <laughs> what really threw me off was the third. I don't think we've had a the third on the podcast before. I think you're right. It's been a pain in my ass uh, pretty much my whole life. I'll get checks and stuff that don't say the third, and then I can't cash them, and it's just Ah. a big hassle. Are you a third-generation dental technician or just a third of your dad's son? (laughs) Just a third of, of the name, yeah. Cool. Awesome. So, Barb, as you can imagine, where I met Jay was online on instagram i know shocking i know (laughs) 
Uh, <laughs> this guy bends more wire than I think I've ever seen anybody bend. <laughs> and honestly, full disclaimer, Jay, I don't know much about bending wire. I don't know much about ortho. So I'm excited to learn how you got into it and what you can teach us about it. Well, I, I don't know much about it either. <laughs> oh, uh, no, what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. I don't believe that. Yeah, I'm looking at your Instagram, so I don't believe that at all. <laughs> Actually, I the only thing I know how to do is the Crozat appliance that I make. Everything else is completely foreign to me, but that's all I've ever had to make to uh, to stay busy. So, And I don't even know what that is, honestly. So let's start at the beginning. How did you get into this role of what you're doing now? How did you discover it? Okay. It's kind of a kind of a longer story, but uh, let's do it. Yeah, go for it. Let's do it. I went to college for forest science at Penn State University. Okay. And the the year that I graduated, the government went on a hiring freeze, so I didn't get any of the jobs that I was looking for because nobody was hiring for for anything. So I moved back home. And I continued my job that I had during college, which was uh, working at a pork processing plant. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's totally weird. So I I just kind of got comfortable. Yeah, I just kind of like settled in doing that, and I, I hated it. But uh, anyway, so fast forward. One day I was at my friend's house. She was having a party, and I went upstairs to use the bathroom and I thought I was going in the bathroom, but I, really I was going into her dad's dental lab, which was oh, in their house. Oh, that's how you found it. That's great. Yeah. So <laughs> I saw, so I saw like his workbench and like all these tiny tools and like all this crazy stuff. And I was like, what the hell is this? So <laughs> I found the bathroom and, you know, I took a piss. I went back downstairs and. I said to my friend, I was like, what the hell is in that room? Like, what is that? And she's like, oh, you know, that's that's what my dad does. He makes, you know, w- wire appliances. And I was like, I was like, is he teaching anyone? Like, you got to have him teach me. Like, this looks so interesting. And he was like an old, old curmudgeon. And uh, he uh, didn't want to teach oh, wait, anyone. An uh, old what? <laughs> curmudgeon <laughs> i've never heard that word what the hell does that mean it's like an old miserable man huh it's like elvis yeah. fancy word for old fart god yeah that's funny. yeah Thank you. <laughs> all right so anyway i asked her to ask him to teach me and she was like oh he'll never do it so maybe for the next like year and a half i begged her i just kept reminding her to ask him and then uh one day, maybe like a year and a half later, he showed up at my house with a box of tools and he, he started teaching me. On, I was off on Mondays at the job that I was working. So yeah. he, would come over, he would come over every Monday and show me. He and came to maybe, you to teach you, though. Yeah, so yeah. did she mention it to him and he just kept saying no? Or did she finally mention it to him after a year and he was like, hell <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll teach him? Oh uh, no, there was there was a pestering process involved. Oh, nice. <laughs> you wore him down, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then maybe maybe after a couple months of him coming once a week, I quit my other job and I started working with him full time. And I worked there for eleven years until I started my own lab uh last year. So you worked in his one room in his house? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> it, it was at first, but not really. I don't know. So did you did you take right to it? Like, how do you how does one learn how to bend wire? Like, what's the process that he went no, through with you? No, I did not take right to it. It's really really hard, and I don't I would I don't know. Maybe for like three months, I was like, this shit is impossible. What was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, uh, but eventually, like things started to click, and then. You know, I just started getting better, and uh, now here we are. For a grumpy old man, was he pretty good with you? Oh, yeah, he was great. He was absolutely great. So once he finally committed that he was going to teach you, he was all in? Yeah. I think the fact that I kept asking his daughter to ask him, like, after a while, he he couldn't uh, 
say no, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's great. Hey, man, sometimes you just got to wear people down to get what you want. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so when he brought you in, again, not knowing a lot about that side of our industry, did he still teach you all the basics of dental lab stuff, like anatomy and tooth numbers, or was it just right into pliers and he taught me uh like i had to get like a an anatomy book just to not be a complete moron about it you know yeah (laughs) but um he taught me tooth numbers and stuff but most of most of the stuff that we do is uh like deciduous dentition so it's the child's it's like lettering yeah yeah um so it's a little bit different but there there is some adult cases so i had to learn those basics just to know what I was talking about, yeah. I've never understood the lettering. I mean, I, I guess just to tell the difference. Yeah. But they always write tooth, number, and then a letter. And I don't yeah. understand why they write the word number <laughs> when it's not a number. It drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were 11 years with him, and then you decided that it was time? Or did he decide he was going to retire, and so you opened your own place? Yes, a little bit of both. Uh, i like a, according to him, I probably left his. I left him a little early because I don't know, but he but he's basically retired now. But yeah, it was just time to go out on my own. Yeah, yeah. It's time to fly. Yeah. Yeah. So then what? So where'd you go? I got an apartment that had an extra room in it, and I made a little laboratory in there, and that was it. Wow. So what kind of equipment did you have to get? I mean, I don't know what it takes to do what you do. So probably the most expensive thing was getting a, I use a hydrogen welder to do my soldering. Oh, wow. Yeah. Those are somewhere around two grand, but everything else was just like hand tools that aren't super expensive. That's great. Yeah. What's the wire made of, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, So most of it is cobalt steel. Uh Uh-huh. And then um, I use silver solder. Every now and then I will have to use gold solder for someone who might have allergies or something. Yeah. Mm. And how do you get your clients? Like, so you work with orthodontists directly? Uh, yes. It's such a small group of people that use Crozats that it, it was all just word of mouth. Like, I, I've never advertised or anything to get work. I think we need to stop and have you explain what a Crozat is is <laughs> okay is it, am i saying it right yes yes you are okay uh, so a crozet is a light wire appliance that is used in interceptive orthodontics so for it's mostly for little kids and it's just an appliance that um widens the mouth and promotes forward facial growth do they have to like use one wire and then they graduate to another one and then slowly you're actually like building out their arch form and their bone? Um, so typically I'll make an appliance and then maybe a year later I'll, I'll have to make uh, additions to it, but it's still the same appliance. So we, it's not, they don't necessarily bump up to like a larger wire size or anything, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I was thinking of like Invisalign, you know, when you've got like four or five different trays and it's moving the teeth and you just keep graduating. So this is just like one, almost like a one shot deal. And it works like that. That's crazy. I've never heard of anything like that. Have you guys heard of uh, ALF appliances? No, I don't think. Is that like a, I know a palate expander. Okay, so and, and Alpha Plants is. Uh... I told you disclaimer at the beginning that <laughs> we're I talking no to idea. an implant technician and a ceramist, so we're kind of clueless. Okay. Talk to us like we're one of the kids you're working on. <laughs> I was gonna say if it if it makes you feel any better, I don't know anything about implants or dentures. <laughs> I've only ever done wire appliances, so. I, I'm well, a novice when it comes to anything else. Well, hopefully, collectively, we can teach the audience something. So. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you, like, learn? I mean, like, how do you grow your skill? Like, does the doctor work with you and design the cases? Because I was looking at the wiring, and it goes, like, around the molar and then on the lingual, and they're all different. So, like, how do you design these cases with the doc? 
Okay, so so the the wire that goes around the molar is called the crib. And that is basically the same thing as like a banded appliance, only instead of using a generic band, you know, to fit whatever size tooth, the, each crib is built specifically for the person. So you have cribs, they're usually on the E's mm -hmm. or sometimes the, the six-year molars. And then the wire that goes around the lingual is the body wire. And then you have all sorts of things from there. You have like lingual arms that go up to the cuspids. You have distal extensions that would go back to the sixes or the 12 year molars. And then there's really a limitless amount of designs that you can have all depending on what the, what the goals are. So you have to actually sit down with the doctor and discuss the treatment goals and figure out what teeth to stabilize and, and where all, all of the wires go. Yeah, so most of the doctors I work for will have a design laid out for me. Okay. Um, I have a couple doctors that the only prescription I get is the is the patient's name, and they'll just say upper crozet, and yeah, I just yeah. have free range to do whatever. But normally, you know, it's pretty obvious if like, you know, if a tooth is missing, I will make the lingual arms go to that gap so that when they open the body wire, that space will open up for the tooth to erupt. Hmm. Uh, sometimes, you know, we have to talk to each other to see what the what the goals are, but uh, for the most part, they either tell me exactly what to do or they let me have free range. So what's the idea? That lingual, what'd you call it, the body? That lingual bar? The body wire, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so is that idea is that is pushing the anterior teeth to where ideally we want them to be? Yeah, so um, there is a, do you know, I forget what it's called now, Ponce, there's like a Ponce ratio or something. It's like a pentagon that you can draw in the mouth to see the size of someone's jaw. Hmm. It's a, it's based, Sounds it's all familiar. based around that. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm saying the right words or not. But ba basically, the, the goal is pretty much always to widen the jaw so that there's room for all the adult teeth to come in. And most of the time, that requires forward growth. There'll be an auxiliary wire to the anteriors that's pushing forward. And then the body wire allows for the widening uh, of the jaw. That's so crazy. It's such a... I mean, I don't want to make it sound, you know, simple, but it's such a simple device doing so much. Yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> I had I had no idea that anything like this even existed, and um, I don't. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the gentleman that taught you, how did he get into it? Because he was like many generations before you. How did he learn it? Yeah. Uh, so he, it's actually pretty crazy. There's there's only a few Crozat technicians in the world and then let alone in America. And I'm from Perkasie, Pennsylvania, and he is from Lansdale, both, both of which are in Bucks County. Okay. And there was a doctor by the name of Terry McRoberts who actually just passed away this year. My boss, his name was Jimmy Martin, or his name is Jimmy Martin. He learned under Terry McRoberts. Oh, the doctor. Yeah. Yes. And then Terry McRoberts learned from this guy, Weebrecht. I forget his first name, but he's like any Crozat book that you could find. This guy Weebrecht is. Like, he was the Godfather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I learned from the guy that learned from the man. You know. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Why are there so few that know this? I think because it's. This is not taught in traditional dentistry schools. It's like continuing education stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's off the top of my head, there's there's me, my old boss, and then he had a, his competitor is a guy named uh, Craig, who also is from Lansdale, which is crazy. <laughs> and then I know a guy in Iowa and those are the those are the four people I know in the in the entire country that that make crozets. It's it's crazy. Do you guys have a yearly meeting where you get together and just kind of talk no. about the, <laughs> talk about the industry and have CE? No. Where... 
how do you keep up with the demand or is there a, a fair amount of demand but a not overwhelming demand because nobody really knows about it speaking of dentists and doctors barb there is so much demand that i've actually had to i've like closed accounts in the past month or two because i've had 70 cases on the shelf and i can only do about 3 a day uh, i've been telling people to go to people that I have taught just to try and spread it around, you know, it's, yeah. it's crazy. So what you're saying, this is something Elvis and I need to look into as a, as a future uh, business matter. Yeah. If you guys, uh, if you guys want to learn. Why do you think <laughs> this hasn't come under regular ortho technicians? Why are they not doing it? Do you have an idea? Um, I think one of the main reasons why is because just like with all orthodontic appliances, you know, you never want to send something out that doesn't work the first time. Yeah. Since this is such a specific thing, like there's plenty of people probably who have tried and maybe their appliance is like 95% of the way there. But unless yeah. it's 100% accurate, then the doctor is going to be completely turned off of the idea of, of trying it. Are there you know alternatives I mean? to accomplish the same thing? Do you know of? Oh yeah, a a absolutely, absolutely. There's, you know, there's like uh, rapid palatal expanders and yeah, bio that's what you hear about a lot. But yeah, looking at those palate expanders, they look like a torture device compared to. What oh my you god, have. yeah, they're crazy. Yeah, they're, I yeah. couldn't imagine. I wouldn't want to wear one, let alone put it on a kid. I mean, geez. yeah. So how many of the ones you make? And you know, be honest. Do you have to remake <laughs> if it's oh, such you know, a technique sensitive? That's a good question because just last month I did some calculations and right now I'm at a 4% return. You know what? Any lab that's would where take I'm that. At. Yep. Any lab would take that number. Yeah. Yep. You got to figure 3.5% of it's doctor's fault. Absolutely. And bad, <laughs> and bad impressions. Yeah. Yep. So everything comes in an impression for you or are they scanning some or is it all pretty much impressions? So the old school guys still send impressions. I actually just bought a uh, Sprint Ray 95 nice. Pro S. But, uh, but the problem, I, like I hate it because they'll send me an, <laughs> <laughs> they'll send me an STL file. And then I print it, but then I have to duplicate it in stone anyway because I can't solder on the plastic. Oh, I've yeah, heard that. yeah. Okay. That's so true. I, so, I didn't think of that. I mean, it's annoying, but at the same time, like, I, you know, I still charge for it, so it's it's not that bad. But um, sure. it's, just, it's just an extra step that I used to not have to take that now I have to take. Yep. So much yeah. for advancement in technology, right? <laughs> yes. Somebody needs to invent high-temperature resin that you can yeah. solder on. Yep. Oh, they will. They'll just be really expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. It'll probably be $1,000 a quart. <laughs> yep. Somebody will do it. They'll just charge you. What part do you solder? I'm looking at your work on Instagram, of course, and like which areas need to be soldered? The ones that looks like mostly around the molars or is it all the little things that go up on the anterior? Okay. So, so all around the molars, the crib there is on the lingual side, is a is a foil pad yep there might be five or six wires that meet there hmm. and so i solder that whole face and then on the buckle side you have the wires from the crib and then there's another part of the appliance called the crescent that is where the retention comes from mm -hmm. so you solder those two together wow. and then any wires going to the anterior teeth are are also soldered on no wonder you go and do three a day. Yeah. 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 My record is five, but after that happens the next day, I don't want to work at all. So it's, <laughs> I, try to keep, I try to keep it around three because then I, you know, I don't want to burn out. Yeah. And I imagine you're the only one. So you're doing all the invoicing and the delivery and the pickup or yeah, how does that I, work? Yeah, I uh, work by myself. So. A lot of it is through the mail. I work for a lot of doctors in California. There is one doctor that I actually pick up and deliver to, which is pretty cool, I think. Yeah. A little bit old-fashioned, but yeah. <laughs> if there's only a handful of you, I imagine you get work from all over the country if they hear about it. 
Yeah, yeah. Right now I work for, I think, 14 doctors. There's one in Canada, and then the rest are just from all over, all over the United States. So do you need an opposing, or do you just want the art you're working on? No, I don't, I don't need an opposing, but usually I'm making an upper and a lower for the same patient. I guess that makes sense, yeah. You don't want to expand one without the other, right? Yeah, right, right. Sometimes <laughs> they'll have maybe uh, some sort of other appliance on the upper, and I'll do a crow's app for the lower, but I don't necessarily need to have the opposing to, sure. to do it. What's your turnaround time like? Oh, God, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, it's really bad. Right, right now, it's about, it's about five weeks. Wow. Yeah, I, I know. Do the kids still have those teeth in five weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, that's not that bad. I mean, you know, some people are scheduling out two, three months on, you know, aesthetic cases and things. I mean. Yeah, that's true. I mean, still, I would think you're working a long damn day, huh? And weekends, too, possibly. Where else are they going to go? <laughs> I've changed my lifestyle to where I I work every day, but once I'm sick of working, then I just do whatever I want. So, like, Saturday and Sunday, I might work, like, four hours in the morning and then yeah. <laughs> just do whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, pretty much have to work every day or I'd be – my turnaround time would be, like, seven weeks. <laughs> Are you considering bringing somebody along and possibly hiring somebody and teaching them? Yeah, so right now I'm I'm actually really slowly trying to teach my one buddy – but he just bought a like a fixer upper house, so all of his free time is going to that right now. Yeah, he was coming over like once a week, ma- mainly because he hates his current job and he wants to get out of it. And I was like, well, hey, you know, you can help me out, and so hopefully that's going to work out. But I don't know, we'll see. Does he have the passion that you have? Yeah, yeah, he's super interested and he's really, um, really detail oriented. So yeah. it seems like it's going to work. It's just going to take way longer than I than I anticipated. Sure. But, I mean, I was watching you. I mean, it's basically your hand, the wire, the model, and your instrument, and you're putting it back and forth onto the model as you're bending it. Like, there's – that is, like, so precise. Oh, yeah. You don't heat that wire? It's just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth? Uh, no. Well, it's not back and forth because that would work hard in it, and it would – it would end up breaking there. So what I'm doing is as I'm, uh, you know, going around the margin of a tooth, I'll make a, a really subtle bend and then I'll test it. And then mm-hmm. I'll, and I'll do it a little more and then test it. But I never go backwards because yeah. that's where you get like breakage. Gotcha. So it's just a little bit at a time. Yeah. It, yes. It's a series of just doing little tiny bends and then just testing it a hundred times over until it's right. And you only use the one instrument to bend it, or do you have a couple that are shaped differently? Uh, yeah, so I uh, the the pliers that I use the most are called bird beaks. I'm, you guys probably know what that is, right? Yeah. Okay, so I have a pair of bird beaks, and then I have a pair of skinny bird beaks, mm-hmm. and then I have two sets of three prong pliers, like a tiny one and then a fatter one. Uh, but that's pretty much it. As far as pliers go. It's pretty interesting to me. That is super interesting. Are they removable or do they get like tacked in? No, no, they they are totally removable. That's, I guess, one of the benefits, especially to, you know, to the parent that something's not being cemented into their kid's head, you know. So they, they click in and out. Hmm. That's why it's it's super important that they're exactly right. So they don't pop out when they're not supposed to. Yeah, but that allows a kid that, you know, is terrible at brushing their teeth to at least take it out and clean it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I get them sent back for repairs, oh God, the smells. I can't imagine <laughs> what what like what a a denture repair person. Goes I imagine through. something with Good. porous material. <laughs> yeah, that's that's freaking gross. <laughs> How does a dentist recommend that they take care of it? Are they supposed to clean it? Do they wear it all the time except for when they brush? They don't wear it when they eat, do they? There's two schools of thought on that. Some people recommend that you take it out when you brush, you take it out when you eat. 
other other doctors they put it in and they don't even tell the the patient that it's removable they want it to be in wow. all the time wow. uh, but that that can lead to less than desirable hygienic conditions yeah. Uh, but, but if you never take it out, then it's always expanding. So that's why there's like a debate between the two ideas. Yeah. That makes sense. What side are you on? You don't want those things smelly coming back. Do you? Yeah. I, I think they should take it. <laughs> I think they should take it out when they eat too, just to, just so there's less breakage and stuff and I don't have to do as many repairs. Yeah. Do you know why they're called Crozats? Uh, yeah, they're named after uh, a doctor whose last name was Crozat. Oh. So uh, I'm probably speaking out of school here, and I should know this, but I don't. I think Crozat came around, and then the guy that I mentioned earlier, Webrick, learned yeah. from him. So he would be like the second generation, I guess. Sure. That's interesting. It all came from one doctor, and here it is. Who yeah. knows how many yeah. years later. Yeah, I think... Uh, I should know all this. I should have looked this up beforehand, but I think it, I think <laughs> he good. came, I think he uh, was around in like the 1890s, I want to say. Oh, really? Back it, then? Yeah, yeah. That Back then, everything was made out of solid gold, too. Sure. They made them out of solid gold? Yes. Yeah. Even the wire part was gold. Did they, ca- did they, they didn't cast them, did they? But they just bent, the, the wire was no. gold? No. Yeah, they didn't cast them. They uh, torched them and soldered them, wow. soldered the wires together. And then uh, I don't know when, but the adoption of using, I use uh, palladium foil yep. behind the wires and it kind of b- like burnishes to the tooth. That that was a, n- a newer thing, whereas the original ones, they just soldered where the wires met and there was no, the foil is kind of like a backdrop and they didn't they didn't have that back then so where do you go to for continuing education or is it basically just an art where you don't see it changing at all or forming different you know types of wires or newer technology like how do you even learn more about it i i get to shout out the aago here the american academy of airway and nephological orthopedics Nathological, I love that name. Uh, me too. <laughs> they're in, <laughs> they're located in uh, Walnut Creek, California. Yeah. And once or twice a year, depending on how many how many students there are, they host a class on uh, the fabrication and adjustments of crozets. And I've actually had the honor of going out there. I think I've taught with them like six or seven times. But even as being like the teacher, every time I go there, I learn so much shit that it's it's crazy. Oh, I bet. Because e- everyone who's involved with them are people that have already they're already graduated, but they they never want to stop learning. So it's a great thing. And if anyone listening is interested in this at all, they should go to any of their uh, classes. Session two being the best one. That's the hands on. Wow. So you've actually taught the class? Uh, yeah, I've taught it alongside uh, alongside an orthodontist named Darren Ward, and then another time I've taught it with Dr. Brian Hockle, who he actually hosts the classes out of his office. It's in uh, Walnut Creek, California. Yeah. So if you're teaching classes, how come there's only three people that do this? <laughs> <laughs> because it's really, really hard. So all these people take the class and then they realize that eh, it's too hard. I'm not doing this. Well, well, they, they they take the class to learn how to use Crozats and adjust them and maybe make repairs. But when they see how hard it is to make one from scratch, they just ask, you know, where where can we send these to get done? Why is it so hard? That's what I, I'm not grasping. Is it just people not having the knowledge of where it can expand or oh no no the the construction part is the hard or i mean that that's the part i'm talking about mostly because if every wire isn't perfectly laid where it should be like right on the height of contour with the crescent below the height of contour then then it just won't work it will either be a little bit loose and then break or it doesn't seat right or it doesn't stay in the mouth 
so that just deters people from even wanting to learn about it just just because of that wow can you screw a, a mouth or a jaw up not you personally but like somebody <laughs> that doesn't do it like that oh yeah 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 i've seen people where they try to like blow the mouth out really wide too fast and then all the teeth are are laid buckly you know and gosh but yeah there's definitely things that can go wrong for sure yeah. Wow. I could see where you'd be a little scared to get into it, but I, I could see where it would be super lucrative and maybe somebody will hear it on our podcast and be like, damn, I want to get into that. And you'll get some phone calls. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I don't need any work right now. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm talking about uh, technicians calling you saying, hey, I oh, yeah, this. that would be awesome. That would be awesome. I think you could teach a lot of labs. Actually, uh, this time uh, in October of last year, they there's such a demand for for labs that make crowsets that the AAGO put on a class that was strictly for lab technicians. Wow! And it was a, they actually did it for free, which was crazy. Did you teach that? Yeah, I I taught that with uh, Craig Duderman, who is a guy who's from Pennsylvania, who's also about to retire. Uh, he's about the same age as my old boss. You're going to be the only one left. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> How many technicians took the course? Was it pretty popular? Or? Um, I think it was eight. I think eight people did. Yeah, and all eight decided it was too hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, I actually referred one of my clients to the student that I thought was doing the best. He's some guy from Iowa. Uh, his name's Luke. I, f I forget his last name, but um, yeah. I sent I sent one of my biggest clients to him just because I couldn't keep up with everyone, and sure. I think it's I think it's working out for both of them. So I'm, you know, that's great. Yeah. So tech, take me back to your technique for a minute. When you solder, what do you have to do? Do you use flux? Do you have to? use special like investment or do you can you just solder directly to the model all the wires that i i put in place so i tack them down with snap set plaster mm -hmm. i know i know most people use like sticky wax or something but this is kind of a different a different ball game so i'll put all the wires in place with plaster and then i'll put flux obviously wherever i want the solder to flow but i'll mm -hmm. have I'll have all the other wires protected by plaster so nothing overheats and there's not a, you know, a weak spot or anything. What do you use for flux? Florex? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I use the flux from the OSE company, That's but it's, cool. yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's just Florex. Barb, how do you know all this stuff? That was an old <laughs> CDT question, and um, I remember that from uh, studying for my exam, that that's what they use for flux. So it sounds like oh, a okay. little smart, but I'm not as smart as I sound. I just recall. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you I are. Don't even know what, I don't even know what flux is. <laughs> I'm thinking flux capacitor with Back to the Future. I'm like, what are you talking about? Flux me. Just kidding. So oh. flux, you know. flux, is, uh, flux is just... I don't know what the hell it is, but it, it, <laughs> it, uh, we are it, not uh, an educational podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it prevents oxidation and overheating, and it allows the solder to flow, you know, wherever you put the flux. Do you get to wear one of those big welders helmet when you solder, or is that not? No, no, I don't uh, have to. No. Yeah, Actually, cool. uh, for the session two class, I made my sister makes. Uh, t-shirts for a living and i yeah. got them to make a t-shirt that said session two flux around and find out <laughs> nice <laughs> that's awesome i need you to make the podcast t-shirts that's hilarious yeah, I, know. I was just thinking that i'm like hey that's not a bad idea <laughs> nope. so do you ever have to put like acrylic pads or anything on there i see that in a lot of ortho yeah, yeah. I used to do it a lot, but I I've told everyone that I work for that I that I'm not going to do acrylic simply because it's annoying and it's like hazardous and it they'll is. still yes. they'll still ask me to make appliances and then they can put the acrylic on when they get it. 
but a lot of times they'll they'll put um they'll put a pad on on either side of the body wire so that when they go for expansion mm -hmm. it's not only pushing the teeth it's pushing you know the actual bone just so they can do more faster with uh, while being more comfortable yeah but you just decided i'm not doing it anymore yeah it's just a pain in my ass so i, I <laughs> That must be nice to be able to be like, you know what, I'm not. Well, when you're this. only one of three that could do yeah, something, that's what I mean, I'm you just, it's amazing. I'm feeling the power of the decision making control. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, do you ever see any part of your technique going other than printing of the models to like a digital? I, you know, I don't know. I've seen videos online of like those robots that bend wires and Ugh. that's crazy. Uh, I don't know how far away it is from everyone, you know, having their own robot wire bender, but yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not really worried about it, I guess. Yeah. If I get put out of a job by those machines, then I'll just make jewelry or something. I'm yeah. not too worried. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking a machine. I was thinking more like you design it, but I don't think you would ever be able to print wire like that without... They have those... Uh, what are they called? It's like a 3D printer, but it's called like a, a Sinter. Uh, I think that's yeah. what it's called. We, we just call them metal printers, I think. Okay. So, I mean, that it, that might be might be getting close, but I, I don't really know too much about them. I know they're really expensive. Uh yeah. I bet you the learning curve's ex crazy, crazy. Yeah. If it'll ever even get there, to be honest. I don't know. That's some delicate wire. I don't even know if printers will be able to handle it. Yeah. If, uh, the stuff that I've seen, it, it it almost looks like it's been cast around the around yeah. the molar. But uh, yeah, I don't know too much about it. I've just seen pictures online. What's the craziest one that you can think of or the hardest one that you can think of that you were asked to do for a patient? So... I've done this maybe maybe five or seven times. So they'll have a crow's at in the upper. And are you guys familiar with like a, a TAD, a temporary anchorage device where there's like screws up into the person's head? Oh, God, no. I uh, no. <laughs> you don't? Okay. So, so there'll be a... Uh, Similar to like a fixed expander where there's that little gearbox that the, yeah. the mom will twist at night. So that thing is actually bolted into the person's head. Oh, jeez. They expand. <laughs> yeah, I know. They expand the maxilla like along the midline. But I've made I've made a couple of crozats that have anchored to the temporary anchorage device, wow. which were they were just crazy. Like so much going on inside one person's mouth so that's probably the craziest craziest one that i've made do they go up through the upper roof of the mouth to anchor that i yeah they it's screwed right into the roof of the mouth i don't know wow i don't know uh the details on it but i've i've seen a few like i will I'll get an impression and there'll be this little gear huh. on the palate and i'm like what the hell is that and then the prescription says Mount the Crozat to this. Wow. And I'm like, what the hell? Why do they and, need uh, both? Um, I don't know. <laughs> this is all very so, confusing to me. I don't under... Like, if all these kids didn't do any of this, what would be the problem? Crowding? I mean... I, oh, I just yeah, don't... crowding. And the, the whole philosophy is to avoid... Yeah, you know, when people get, like, their bicuspids extracted because they're there's not enough room for all their teeth. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting braces while they're teenagers, they're getting things bolted in their heads while they're children. <laughs> yeah. Seems fair to me. I think you got that right, Elvis. Wow. Actually, a lot of the ones that I make will have buckle tubes because they have braces at the same time. Oh, my God. Of having the Crozat, yeah. This poor kid. Their mouth is just full of metal hardware <laughs> yeah 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 cyborgs <laughs> yeah oh but they won't need braces later oh well good <laughs> do you ever have anybody at now at this point ask for gold probably the last time was about a year ago it's only when someone has an allergy it's so much more expensive uh than silver solder that it's 
it's not very popular. Is it easier to bend the gold? Is it a little softer? Oh, it's, it's easier to work with in all ways. And when you solder gold, it's an actual chemical bond. Whereas when you solder silver, it's just, you're just putting silver over the wire. So it's just a physical bond. Oh, oh interesting. Yeah. When you solder gold, it all becomes, I don't know, the yeah. same. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So that's interesting. Last time I bought gold solder, it was, oh my God, I think it was like $84 a foot or something. So it's, nobody really wants to use it just because it's so much money. Yeah. Is that how your wire comes in one straight piece or is it in a spool? No, the, so the cobalt wire comes in a spool and then there's this wire called l -Jewelry. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. It no. That comes in, in 14 inch lengths. But that's more used for like if there's a, a single spring to a certain tooth, you know, if a tooth's like laid in lingual, you'll put a its own spring to it to push it out. Yeah. But the, the cobalt stuff comes in a spool. You know. Is this all dental metal or can you just like go to a hardware store and just grab some metal? Oh, no, dude. <laughs> no, it's all it's all it's, it's all dental. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> go to Granger or whatever that place is it's got that huge catalog of everything you ever need <laughs> I don't know where we got him but we're going to keep him Jay. Oh, sh <laughs> <laughs> I disclaimered the very beginning that I have no idea what any of this stuff is yeah it's pretty cool though looking at all the different designs it's just like wow so the guy that trained you obviously didn't want to lose you huh <laughs> no I mean but it, yeah, I get it. I made him enough money that I was like, all right, this is, I got to go by myself now. Yeah. Sounds like it's very little to get everything you need to do it. I mean, money wise, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice and you could be pretty busy. Yeah. 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 Like I said, the most expensive piece of equipment is the torch and that's only two grand. And yeah. So the doctors, how much do they like, do you know the patient fee on one of these for the doctors? Just curious. Uh, so that there's a pretty big range on that. There's actually so much of a range that I have <laughs> that I have a price for doctors on the West Coast and then a price for doctors on the East Coast. Good. Smart. <laughs> so I think they do it in phases. And one doctor that I work for, phase one, which is like 12 to 18 months, it, I think he charges like $6,500 maybe. Wow. And then they'll probably get braces after that to complete everything. Wow. I don't really know. I shouldn't say much more about that because I don't really know that. I don't really know that you do. I get you. No, I was just looking for a, I was just looking for a base range in my head. I was thinking, yeah, that was kind of what I was thinking because I mean, it's a pretty intricate piece of, you know, beautiful, uh, what do you, what's the word I'm looking for, Elvis? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just take that all out, would you? <laughs> take the whole damn thing out. What about appliance? I mean, what about... appliance. Damn it. Thank you, Barb. <laughs> appliance. Say it normally and I'll edit it in. Because it's a beautiful appliance and I was assuming at least, at least they would charge five grand for it. So yeah, that was what I was thinking in my head. There you go. Beautiful. My dog's head. Right. <laughs> what about you, Jay? So few of you do this, which I love to bring up because I think it's amazing. Are you able just to basically charge what you want? And by no means am I asking you to tell your prices, but. So I don't really know. Uh, I charge. So I know what my, my old boss charged. Yeah. And then when I broke away from him, I charged a similar amount. Yeah. And then when I taught the class for technicians this past October, there was one guy who took the class who was who was also making Crozats, but just for one doctor that he works for. Uh -huh. And me and him went out and got some beers after the class and we were sharing secrets and whatnot. Yeah, sure. And it turns out me and him were charging the same price. So exactly the awesome. same price. Exactly the same price. So, so that was I don't that was like uh, reassuring, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. 
you make three a day. It's the only thing you do. I mean, you yeah. must charge a decent amount and make a good living off of it, I would hope. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not homeless, so. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You at least have a computer. We've learned that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got it right here. Uh, I got the uh, Legion Lenovo gaming computer. There you go. <laughs> I just got this because somebody told me that when I got my 3D printer that I needed all sorts of whatever the hell makes a gaming computer strong yeah. or powerful, whatever that is, translates to running 3D printers, and it's treated me pretty good so far so what does a doctor usually do uh, pvs or alginate when they take an impression what do you prefer that they do i pr i prefer alginate just because there's even with my sprint ray printer um so the, there's like a super specific l little crease where you see where the tooth meets the gum line mm -hmm. you can only really see it perfectly when it's an alginate impression when I have to duplicate a 3D print, it's not that that line is lost, but it's way less it's way less visible, I guess, or way yeah. less defined. Hard. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Interesting. That's some Crozat crazy stuff. Oh wow! What a segue. Yeah. I've been waiting all hour to say that. <laughs> Awesome, Jay. That's some great stuff, man. I had no idea. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I saw you on Instagram, and I had no I thought you were just bending ortho wire. I had no idea you were making one specific device that few people make, but everybody wants. I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, I at least learned you something. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up some stuff I didn't know before we started. I don't, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but uh, we picked it up. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Well, Jay, thank you so much, man. We appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for having me. Well, hopefully uh, someday we'll see you at a lab show and you'll be teaching other lab technicians about this stuff. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Cool. We'll talk to you later. Okay. See ya. Yep. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Jay, for coming on the podcast and teaching all of us about this unique thing called a Crozat. We actually love showcasing technicians that not only find their niche, but are also able to make a really good living off of it. Head over to AAGO.com to learn more about this device. And seriously, if any labs out there are looking for a new product to offer, it seems like a no-brainer to me. Thank you, Jay. And now. Here are the audio thanks that we got this week to celebrate CDT and Dental Technician Appreciation Month. Hi, everybody. This is Norbert from Growth3x. Today is June 1st, which means today is the first day of Dental Technicians Appreciations Month. I want to thank all the dental technicians in my life because of what you do, because how you take care of patients, how you take patients from soup to heart to maybe steaks, how you create beautiful smiles and just create happy lives. I also want to thank dental technicians for the part that you guys are playing in my life, actually. Most of my friends are dental technicians. I own a dental supply company, which caters primarily to dental technicians. And the best man on my wedding was a dental technician. So thank you so much for being part of my life. Thank you so much for letting me be part of your life and happy dental technicians month. <music> It's Beth from The Party Enamel and I just want to say thank you to everyone who connects with me, helps when I'm stuck on cases. I was just a huge tooth nerd too. This new community vibe that we've created as a profession is what I'm here for. I love to see it. We're making huge changes and it's moving in the right direction. So I cannot wait to see bigger and better changes in the future. I also want to say I'm so proud of the technicians who have taken my webinars and online coaching or the ones who have joined the dental technology community app Tech Talk. You all strive to be better and it's the best feeling watching everyone grow together. So to all technicians out there, you are important, your voice matters, and you are making a difference. Happy Dental Technician Month. Thanks to everyone for sending in their audio thanks. Remember, there's still three more weeks to send them in and you can make someone feel special by giving them a shout out. Aww, I'm going to do mine, I promise.
And I got to go get my shirts today. Is your thing going to be about your dad again? Um, No. Oh, good. Yeah. We're going to mix it up. Awesome. All right, everybody. That's all we got for you. And we will talk to you next week. Bye. I got a lot to say, okay? (laughs)